and before we get into some Vortex Math and Max, we need, uh, we need to let some chi flow us and uh, do, share a little beauty. So, time to share a little beauty and talk about flow yet again. I need to remind you guys, flow is absolutely essential to understanding all this. Crucial, extremely crucial, right? But it's not just understanding it, it's also about feeling it. Because we have three minds. We have the rational mind, the emotional mind, and the spiritual mind. And we need to have a balance of all three of those. Until you get that balance, alright? There you go. Until you get that balance, you can't proceed any farther. So don't laugh at me. Um, actually, laugh all you want. We need more positive vibes. So, uh, let's start. Okay, you got some, you got some, uh, some energy moving through you. Hopefully, I uh, got some sort of excitement into you or you're just rolling your eyes. Regardless, I have your attention. So, that's what's most important. So, uh, some people have been talking about... Thank you. <laughs> so, some people have been talking about... Um, what have we done lately? What, what advancements has happened? And there's a, a lot of people um, who are working to advance the idea of Vortex Mathematics, not just me. And really, in the loosest sense when I use the word team, is anyone who's trying to advance Vortex Mathematics. So it could be you right now and that you have an interest and you want to do something to share this knowledge with everybody. So I want to share something that I find is one of the most crucial, important things with Vortex Mathematics, one of these fundamental patterns within it that uh, Marco discovered, Dan Winters discovered, and um, I discovered all on our own because it's, it's very apparent when you start to play with Vortex Mathematics. And, uh, well, it's the, it's the Fibonacci sequence. And a lot of people, uh, a little tangent, uh, are talking about, you know, what, what can we do with this, what can we build? Um, but the priority, the number one priority, as Marco always says, is teaching it, sharing the knowledge, just getting it out there so you can absorb it and you can transmute it into whatever you want. So what I'm going to do with right now is I'm going to share something with you um, that's absolutely fundamental and hopefully is going to blow your mind um, with a new perspective to look at things and share, tie in why flow is entwined with this concept of music and why life is like music and that you need to get on this bandwagon of playing the piano um, to the, I don't want to say the correct beat, but just feeling the beat, just really feeling the beat. So, Fibonacci sequence. I'm going to pull this up here. And what you guys are looking at right now is the Fibonacci sequence broken down um, with this cool little illustration um, into its quantum numbers. So, let's start in the center with 9. Your 9 is really your 0. This is an abstract concept that some of us talk about. And, and that really, the, the whole the whole, if you look at the number circle, that's your zero. The actual circle is a zero, but there's nine parts, the whole, the nine. And from out, from there, if you're looking at base 10 mathematics, you start with the zero, and then it goes to one. So zero plus one is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, five, eight, and this is when you get into the, breaking down the numbers, 13 is four, 21 is three, uh, 34 is seven, 55 is 1, 89 is 8, 144 is 9. And then you got 233 and so on, and I'm not going to calculate that in my head right now. Actually, I'm, uh, I can tell you right now, 233 is 8, 377 is 8, 610 is 7, 987 is 6, 1597 is 4, 2584 is 1, 4181 is 5, 6765 is 6, 10946 is 2, 17711 is 8, 28657 is 1, and we're going back to the 9 as uh, 46368. So, that would be the 25th step. Well, if you've heard, this isn't new to some people. Some people are completely aware of Vortex Mathematics that this does this. Okay? Now, one thing I realized at Tesla Tech is we had a little fundamental problem with how we viewed it. Is we started at 0 and we worked all the way up until once we get to the 25th digit, we realize we're at 9, it's, the pattern starts to repeat. Well, actually, what happens is your, your 9 is your balance. It's your, it's your origin. And really, it's going in two different directions. So you're getting 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 4. 
but you're also getting 9, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And that negative 1 equates into 8, negative 1, 8, negative 2, 7, and so on. Now, if we go back to the image um, that I, I've put together artistically to show uh, this Fibonacci sequence, you really, for something to manifest of this infinite existence, the 9, it must become polarized. It polarizes into two finite forms of existence. First being a 1 and an 8, a 1 and an 8, a 2 and a 7, 3 and a 6, 5, 4, 1, 8, 4, 5, 3, 6, 7, 2, 1, 8, 1, 8, and then, col then compressing back into an infinite form of existence. It's expansion and contraction in its simplest form. Um, and you can also see, interlaid within this, you have your 339669. And so, 9 in the center, and if you're going uh, counterclockwise, you go 339669. And so you have that oscillation hidden within the Fibonacci sequence. So it shows how the Fibonacci sequence is entwined with the doubling circuits when applied to, say, a rotating coil. <sighs> Alright, um, so these are some basic concepts. Um, but, uh, one thing I want to share is how it's not a 24 set pattern, it's a 23 set pattern. So if you have 9 as the origin, and you go to the negative and the positive um, in terms of traditional base 10 number line, you only go 11 one direction, 11 the other direction. So it's 23. So really the pattern broken down is 5. And the golden ratio, which you can get out of, the um, Fibonacci sequence. As you go up in base 10 Fibonacci sequence, you take any numbers and you divide them by themselves, um, it approaches the golden ratio, 1.61803. Well, this is an irrational number, and uh, you can get this by taking the square root of 5 plus 1 and dividing it by 2. Well, if you had to break that down into vortex mathematics, you could say, theoretically, however, I feel this absolutely intuitively, that number, the quantum number of the golden ratio, is 5. Um, it just makes perfect sense. You can see it with the pentacle. It's exhibited in every way, in every possible way. So let's let's take this up a notch. This is some things that's, you know, not new to everybody. And uh, even though Marco has thrown this a little bit on the internet, there's not much about it. Um, Dan Winters talked a lot about it. Uh, but we're going to take this a step up and apply this to music, okay? Now this is completely new, and I don't think I've ever shared this in the public with anyone. But uh, I'm going to pull up this little sheet here, okay? And we're going to work with 0 going up all the way to the 24th pattern set, 28657, which is a 1. Um, now, what I'm going to show you is a new way to see a musical scale interlaced within the Fibonacci sequence. So, and I'm going to show the process of how I figured it out, and it's not too hard. Um, it's not hard at all, and we can do this in a couple minutes. So, we take the ratios of every consecutive nu set um, numbers in this set um, to create a ratio, and we get 24 types of ratios. Now, first one being 9, 1, and then 1, 1, and then 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 5, 5, 8, 2, 1, 4, 3, and so on. So we get 24 ratios. Now, what I did to visualize this easier for myself is I applied this to a fundamental frequency. So what I was using was 256, being a lot of music um, skills we use between 256 and 512. So it's easiest to work with. And so when I did that, I get all these frequencies here. So 9 times 256 is 2304. And here's all these frequencies laid out. Now, the thing is, you have a lot of uh, frequencies of the same octave. Um, you have a lot of C notes, basically. You, you got the 2304 at the top and 256 and the 128. Right there, those three, three first frequencies are all C notes, um, perfect Cs. And well, basically, you can toss out all those extras. Um, and so to visualize this easier, again, this isn't the, you don't have to do it this way. This is just a, how I visualize it easier, and I can show it to you, is I put these all in the same frequency range between 256 and 512. So I either had to multiply it by 248 or divide it by 248, because it's either halving or doubling. And so you have the modified frequency here, and you got 288, 256, uh, 128, and so on. The ones in bold are the ones I threw out. And um, I mean, the ones I kept. Um, because you have, again, a bunch of 256s. And so I only bolded one C note. And you don't use the other ones. And that leaves me with 13 unique frequencies. Now, I laid these out um, together in order. 
between 256 um, and 455. And when I do that, I can then get these ratios. Now, let's take a look at these ratios, okay? Um, the first one is 1, 1, and then 9, 8, and 8, 7, 7, 6, 6, 5, 5, 4, 4, 3, 3, 2, and the pattern starts to change um, where it's this ascending pattern now, 8, 5, 10, 6, 12, 7, 14, 8, 16, 9. It shouldn't be hard too hard. Shouldn't be that hard to see the pattern evolving in this new ratio set. However, I realize 256 is not the fundamental you apply to this. Um, I just realized I don't have this pulled up at the moment, so bear with me one second. Um, well, I can talk about it. Uh, what the frequency is. Um, uh, the fundamental frequency is. 256 is based off the doubling sequence of 2. Um, um, you could even say 1 for that matter, but 2. Um, what made more sense afterwards when I started plugging in different fundamental frequencies, but really what you're working with is 9. And so I plugged in the fundamental 288. You could also do 144, the octave speed of light. 144 is a really, really big number. So important to getting this coil system to work, and that's something I'm going to explain later, um, but not this moment. Um, in this presentation. So if you apply 288 to this uh, uh, ratio set, you get 288, 324, 329.14, 336, 345.6, 360, 384, 432, there's your A432, 460.8, 480, 493.71, 504, and finally 512. It ends with the C note, it does not begin with the C note. Big difference. Um, but otherwise you have some fundamental frequencies in there and it's a completely new, unique music skill based off the Fibonacci sequence. What's most interesting, it has 13 notes, not the 12. Now this is something interesting to think about the Mayans and their importance of 13. That their base set cycle was set on 13. And it was 13, 20 were the most important numbers to them. And how this most basic of cycles is 13. Um, I can't remember what's, we're in the final 13th cycle at this very moment um, of this batoon. I can't, I can't remember what it's called. Ian Lungold explains this. Um, and uh, he, um, my really good friend Walker, hosted Ian Lungold um, for his last lecture in Sedona. Um, bless him, he was an amazing man. May he rest in peace. Uh, that we're in these 13 cycles, and when we approach, I think it's February 11th, or Febru February something, um, maybe the 4th, 9th, somewhere around there, uh, 2011, we move out of this current cycle into an even faster paced cycle. So instead of these 13 days, which are divided up, that's metaphorically days, uh, 7 days and 6 nights, um, each represent 360 days with our calendar. And after this period in February, those 360 days get crunched into 20 days and that uh, our experiences and consciousness are going to accelerate. So what this is showing is that our cycle of time is dancing to music. Wow, cool, so cool. And so we, we, got, we got to think about this and, and, and really start to apply it. And so right now I've taught you something, a new type of music scale, uh, a natural ratio um, scale found within the Fibonacci sequence. Now, this is what I'm sending out to you because there's a lot of composers, a lot of people who know how to jam out on acoustic um, and are just musically talented. There's a lot of talented young musicians out there right now and old. I'm not, I'm not excluding anyone. Um, young and heart. So, what I'm asking you to do, besides not just taking this in and hopefully smiling, because that's the, that's the first thing, if not the main thing to do, is just smile about me like, wow, that's beautiful, is uh, do something with this, compose it. Um, as I said earlier, to know and not to do is not to know. So let's make some music, guys. Let's dance. Let's let's fabricate this new concept to understand standing ratios of music um, in the most natural, progressive way. And let's uh, let's feel the beat. Let's really start to feel the beat. So uh, take it from there and uh, namaste, adios.